So the problem we're getting is when you switch it on, which I'll do now to show you. Um, beeps at you and it comes up with an error message saying the printer's ink pad is at the end of its service life. Please contact Epson support. Um, which you can do, of course, um, from Googling it. What I hear is that it's uh, either they try and get you to buy another printer or they charge you a lot of money to uh, have that fixed. So I looked into it, came up with a solution uh, and I'll take you through that now. So in order to uh, fix the issue, um, there's a, a two part process to this. The first thing is to replace the, uh, the printer pads that are within the, the potty, which holds the waste ink, which is why the printer isn't working. The potty's, well, the printer says the potty is full of ink and therefore you need to replace it before you can continue. And because of that, the printer shuts down and in order to reset it, uh, in order to re make it realize that the potty uh, is not full, uh, you need a special key to unlock the printer to reset it. So the two part process to this is the first thing is replacing the pads, which um, effectively it, it, within the printer itself, there's a potty which is, looks like this. It's basically a black box, which is a few inches, a couple of inches long, an inch or two wide. Um, and then it's got these, the pads. These are brand new pads, which I've ordered online. Uh, the pads, as we'll see later within the printer, are all black. They're all sitting within the potty, which is full, um, which is what we're replacing. So the first thing is to open up the printer, get hold of that potty, replace the pads. Um, and then the second part of it is to have a key, which again, you can buy online to reset it. So the tools which I'll use for the job, um, it, mainly it's a Phillips screwdriver. Um, You've got about nine or ten uh, little screws to take out uh, so you'll need that and then I've also just for leverage mainly just got a, a flat screwdriver pliers add, mm, just need them a little bit to tweak out the potty at the end but you don't really need those at all and then I just use a Tupperware just to keep all the screws uh, in one place so I don't lose any of those to put it back again right so the first step is then to start opening this up so what you'll need to do first of all is uh, is to lift the lid as if you're getting access to where all the uh, the ink is. So I'm sure you're well aware of that. So the first two screws that you're going to take out are at the front here. There's one there and there's one over there. Um, so we'll take those out and uh, and then we'll move on to the next one. So I've removed those two screws uh, using my Phillips screwdriver. Put the screws into the little Tupperware. Um, so that was that screw there and that screw there. Now, with uh, you need to then just lift off this plastic cover that those two screws were holding down. So it's easier if you had a hand on each end and just lifted it up um, and keep that aside uh, safely, because obviously you'll need to put that back. Next step is to replace two more screws, uh, sorry, to remove two more screws. Um, so it's this one here, the silver one, and then there's another one which is down the gap there. Um, it's the one you come to when you go straight down. So I've removed those two silver screws. So the next thing to do is you want to move this uh, front, front panel here. Um, so you need your flat screwdriver now. And uh, you, you're trying to get underneath, between these two pieces of plastic here. Um, it's very hard to show in the video, but maybe at that angle you can see it. There's a that's what you're trying to get your little flat screwdriver in there just with a slight nudge and you'll see it will ping off uh, hopefully it won't go too too far away there we go all right so that panel's come off uh, next thing we need to find the next two screws so we're going to uh, raise the flaps i'm actually going to take out the paper drawers as well um, i think that just makes things a bit easier to get access to um, right, so the next two screws uh, is the black one here and the silver one there. So let's take those out now. So we've removed those two screws, uh, which uh, then means you can take away the front cover here for an easy. That just pulls away. Uh, again, keeping that aside amongst the other things we've taken off. And we have another screw here. So we're going to take this one out. Uh, again, it's another silver one. Uh, and then we're going to flip uh, the printer on its side.
we're almost ready to flip the printer now uh, just to recap what we've taken out our three black screws four silver screws and, uh, and then we're going to flip it over I've, sh I've shut the front uh, and then I'm going to flip it over uh, onto its side that way so it's on its left because what we're trying to get to is the potty which is sitting underneath here printers on its side now as you can see and uh, we're going to work on the bottom now there's a silver screw there and you guessed it that's the one to come out next um, this is the uh, the potty area here so that's what we're going to take out and uh, all those pads we looked at earlier are all within there screws been removed now and uh, kept safely in the uh, in the little bucket you'll notice it's a short little grubby silver screw so just distinguishable from the others that we've taken out next step is there are no more screws uh, the, but the potty or the waste containers held in um, really by uh, these little plastic uh, stubs so all you need is with your flat screwdriver again is to I find it easier just pushing it in there and then just with a slight bit of that bit of leverage and that will pop out like that um, so it's, it's come away it's come loose and then literally you're just going to ease that out with your hands and there we go hey presto so that's all the black um, pads inside which we're going to replace with a silver I mean with a nice shiny new ones so uh, that's the the waste ink container or the potty as they call it and hopefully you can see that this is where the waste ink will come from the ink uh, cartridges uh, and it drips from there into into the potty here absorbed by the sponges or the pads um, online you'll find some companies talking about a external plastic container that you can get um, so instead of replacing these pads um, you can buy a tube which will clip onto that and there'll be a way I'm not sure because I haven't looked into this but there's a way then for the tube to come outside of the printer to sit outside on your desk next to your printer and take all the drips and then whenever the printer's full you just replace that potty um, rather than uh, all these each time. Taking the pads out using the pliers, all very easy to do. And you can see it's still shiny inside and that's the excess ink which I'll wash out. Um, what I decided to do is when I took the ink pads out one by one, I put them in the order in which they came out of the tank. Um, just as a double check, just to make sure that when I put the new ones back, I'm going to put them in, in exactly the right order. Uh, which is obviously important i've washed that out and that literally took five minutes um, as it is a water-based ink it just runs off the plastic very easily so that's nice and clean now given it to dry with a bit of paper towel um, and we're almost ready to go for it it'll be the next step i'll be putting these in following the order i don't think i need to take you through that um, so i'll put them all in and then uh, come back on the next video um, just before I do that, um, online, um, some people were saying you can wash out these pads. Honestly, it's not that worth it. Um, I think I paid about £10 for these. And um, yeah, if you want to spend your hours washing them, you can. I don't know how effective they are once you've done that. Um, so I didn't, uh, I couldn't be bothered to be honest. And it's looked easy enough just to replace them with new ones. And then at least I know it's not going to um spill or cause any later issues done i've literally just put the uh the pack together six of them um they provide two extra ones just in case uh, you need some extra width in there i didn't need them um so they all stack together and then it's just a matter of um popping them in the box we've got our nice shiny new pads and uh, we just in reverse order just going to put this back into its slot and uh, that'll just clip into place like that there we go and then uh, don't forget the little silver oops little silver grub screw is the first one to go back uh, back into the hole that you took it out of uh, before i turn it over i'm going to put the next one in it's just a little bit easier since it's upright which is the other silver one and that goes in there um, and then i'm going to lower it on its side um, And then uh, 
see how tight in that. Next piece to go back will be the corner piece. And uh, don't forget the, the, the two screws uh, that go back there as well. There's the, uh, the silver one and the black one that go into the corner. So we'll replace, screw that one in and then screw this corner in as well. Um, and then what I'll also do is put back the two paper trays that we took out. Right, so that, uh, that corner's gone back uh, with the two screws, the black screw and the silver screw. So what you should be left with now are four screws, two silver, two black. Uh, you've got that corner piece still to go back here as well. Uh, the two paper trays are just going back. Uh, you can fold that away again, fold that away again. Right, in order to, obviously you, you shut the lid in order to put it back on its side, you've got to be able to to lift that again. If you try that now, you'll notice you can't. It's, uh, it's, it's, there's a latch, there's a catch. And that catch is there. It's just a little clip on a spring, which if you slide that across with your finger and then lift, your, lift it up with one hand, it's a bit trickier for me, but with two hands, you'll be able to do that fairly easily. Um, right, the other little tip to show you, um, at the bottom of this corner here, you got this ridge, it's like a lip. Hopefully you can see that um, on the film. And there, there's a gap down here. And the, the way to get this back uh, smoothly is to get that little lip into that ridge first. Um, so rather than trying to start from the top and then getting the lip, then start from, from the bottom. So get that, get that into, the, into the groove and then you just got to push it. Um, it's a little tight, but it'll eventually just push and clip into place and just make sure that all the edges are all lined up and it's looking good. So that's held in by itself anyway. But of course, we've got the two uh, silver screws to go back. Um, so don't forget the one silver screw goes down the hole down there. And uh, we're left with a big black strip, which was the first one that you took off. So obviously just line it up properly. This one, my serial number is on the top. And I know if that face is upwards, uh, that's the right way. Um, so literally that, it's fairly, fits in very easily. Um, bit of a clip, bit of a clip on both sides. There we go. And then you'll see the two holes where the two, last two black screws go. So we'll put those in now. It's a, that's back in again, that little slot. So that's your printer back together again. So now you can uh, plug it back into the mains, plug it back into the computer. Uh, and then we enter part two. Right, so part two is, is resetting the printer now. It comes with a predetermined number of pages that, that it can print before it uh, clocks out. And, uh, and that's where you're getting your error message uh, like I was on my printer. So you now need to reset it back to uh, zero. Um, and then I guess when it comes to its predetermined number of pages, you'll have the same problem again in I don't know how many years time or months time, depending on how much you print. So you need to, I bought this code online. It's, it was under a tenner, uh, five, 10 pounds, something else like that. Um, I bought mine from a company called Octo Inc. Um, and uh, they then send you this pamphlet, which very clearly sets out uh, the instructions, what you must do, mustn't do, uh, etc. So what I'm going to do now is, is download the program um, onto my computer and uh, and then enter the code and see what happens. So I'll talk you through that so that you get my experience. So it's asked me to uh, download a program, which I've done. I've asked it to run, which has now been installed onto the computer. And it's this uh, launch Opto Ink Waste Reset thing, which is what I'll do now. Um, so it's going to launch as I finish it. So uh, here we go to the next page. This is basically just saying greetings. It's looking for the printer. It's now asking me to switch it on. Uh, the instructions are very clearly saying it should be connected through the USB, not wireless. Um, I'm not sure what would happen if it went through wireless. I'm not going to try it. So I've connected mine through the USB. Um, so let's see. Okay, I've switched it on. It's now saying uh, it's detected the printer and it's saying select the Epsom XP800 801802. So mine's an 800. Um, it asked me to restart the printer, which is what I've done. It's now come up with another window saying I want to reset the waste counters, um, which is the one I will press because that's what I'm trying to do. 
I don't want to reset my ink levels, uh, etc. So when I print that, let's see what happens. Okay, this is what I was hoping for. Enter the reset key here. So this company provided me with a 16 character number, which I will put in now. Right, so I press the number and uh, press continue. It's now saying, uh, please turn off the printer now. So let me do that. So that's what I'm asking the printer to do. This is what it said it would ha uh, this is what would happen in the instructions. So congratulations, your printer's weight counter has now been reset. Once your printer has shut down, you can then turn it back on again and continue to use the printer as normal. Please remember to replace the waste ink pads, the waste ink pads, or fit an external waste ink tank. So I think I've done it. Um, so fantastic. Um, press close. And I guess I don't need this window anymore, so I'll close all that down um, and try print. Oh, so here we go. Uh, oops. That uh, that worked. So I've asked it to print something. The drawer is opening. I've got no errors, uh, and it's printing something for me, which is amazing. Job done. I hope you have as much success as I have in this, using this video. I hope it's useful.